been with you Among the things that I've been through I've been shown a higher view Talking points of this blog are as follows Are we currently vibrating within the fourth dimensional realm? I will talk about the differences between third or fourth densities versus third or fourth dimensions. We'll comment on a particular type of religious person or, or persons who troll my channel and vlogs to post dogma, judgment, and scare tactics as a means to attack my character, denounce my experiences, revelations, and life purpose. I will be providing a list of common physical symptoms that your physical body is aptly shifting or mutating to acclimate to fourth density. Last but not least, and by popular demand, will provide drawings or depictions of interesting entities or expressions of creation that I have seen along my mission and travel. What's up? What's up everybody? You know who it is. Let me say First off, I want to thank all of those new subscribers out there. 5,000 subscriptions. 5,000 subscriptions. It seemed like it was just yesterday when I had 600. In many ways, it was like yesterday because time has really accelerated. But I'm going to get back to that point of discussion. But this, again, is a true testament of the many who are waking up to their inherent multi-dimensional selves. I often say that most people find me by way of their personal experiences. I get emails all the time from people who write me and say, wow, I looked up out of body experience because I had this experience. Am I going crazy? Is this, is this what's going on here? You know, and, you know, they're frantic, they're excited. Some of them are scared, but I take the opportunity to let them know, no, you're not going crazy. This is a very widespread phenomenon when in truth it is a part of our existence. We're just beginning to reawaken to this on a massive scale. So again, thank all of my new subscribers out there and the many, many, many more who check in and watch my videos who are not subscribers. Believe me, guys, there are many more people who are interested in this subject matter but don't want to show an interest by way of their channels because they have a little reservations about what others may think if they see the kind of things that they're really interested in. And that leads me to my next point of discussion. You know, it seems that all of a sudden I'm getting a surge in, let me choose my words wisely because I do not want to incriminate or to come across as if I'm judging an entire community. But particularly those who identify as Christian, there, there are certain segments within this community who have been consistently judging me, hence calling me evil, and saying things that I have heard a million times before. Let me give you guys a little background information here, and I'm going to state this for the record. I grew up in a Christian environment, meaning ever since I was a child, there was Christian influence all around me. My mother, who happens to identify as Christian, took us to a Baptist church. Christian theology and the belief system was and is still one of the greatest influences of my life. I've had more people who identify as Christians around me. So when those of us who are Christians quote scriptures to try and show and prove that I am either being used as an instrument for Satan or that I am misleading people or that I am evil, etc. Trust me when I say that I have been there, done that. When I was a child, 
I do I did mo much of what I do now and that is I learn something from everyone I don't close myself off to anyone because there is something to learn from everyone and since Christian theology had been a huge part of my rearing I had already taken what I needed and I have left the rest behind I am not interested in dogma I am not interested in scare tactics. I'm not interested in how much power the devil has above all else. Again, I have been there, done that. There's no point in pointing out scriptures to someone who has been there, done that. You're not going to convince me that what I'm doing is not what I am supposed to do in this life because there is absolutely no doubt about it. There is more to existence and more to life than dogma and rigid belief systems. Far more. And I've just always been one of those people who was far more interested in learning what I can learn here as well as there because when I say there it's a euphemism meaning outside of the box outside of conventional wisdom because I have always always felt that there was more and that my evolution depended on knowing and honoring and, and, and illuminating this truth now when I sit before this camera and speak about my personal experiences my own revelations. I'm not speaking as someone of authority. I've never claimed to be someone of authority. I'm not claiming to be a guru or saint or Jesus or anything like that. I'm simply using my experiences, my, my revelation, and my personal truths as a platform to stimulate critical thinking and to get those of us who are just waking up or who have had similar experiences a place to connect. Most people relate to what I'm saying because as I stated before it is because they have had an experience. So how am I deceiving anyone? Those who have eyes will see and those who have ears will hear and those who are connected with their heart will feel that I am coming from a pure and genuine intent. If I was an instrument for Satan, trust me, I would be very, very, very successful in the worldly sense of the word, meaning great access, international platform. You know, we have to understand how the, those who are service to self-intelligence, who are really of this orientation work. Those who are of this orientation block, deny, and attack those who do not come into their particular fold or who is not uh, furthering their particular agenda. And, as I've stated many times before, I have been attacked. I have been blocked. I have been abused. Psychically, mentally, and spiritually. Physically as well. I live a very humble life. I'm a humble person. Always have been. I'm very compassionate. I've always been a person of service. Before I even created Astro Boo Baby, I have a long history of doing outreach work, particularly in the inner cities. So this has been my being, my existence for a very long time. And I'm sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news to those of us who take this information in this way. But there are those of us who are not afraid to stand in their own light. There are those of us who are not afraid to think critically and to express that. There are those of us who are not afraid to ask questions. If you come to someone such as myself and say that you have all the facts, I'm going to ask you some pretty tough questions because I'm not going to just accept something just because you say so or because you have someone or something you say is of authority. 
I'm not cut out of that cloth and I don't expect anyone to do that with me. When I share my information, I always say, take what resonates and leave behind. I don't feel the need to use scare tactics or to judge or attack or make videos attacking the workings of someone else. People write me all the time and ask me, what do I think of this person? What do I think of that person who's doing this kind of work? And anyone who's watched me will tell you and that I've responded to, they will tell you, I always say, I do not make judgments about anyone and their mission and what they're doing. That's up for you to decide. Even when they ask me my opinion, I still refrain because I realize that now with the platform that I have, I can influence and sway people's opinion when it comes to other people. And I'm not going to allow myself to do that. So spiritual maturity truly comes from realizing that everyone has their own path. Everyone has the right to accept or deny what he or she chooses. And they should not, or we should not, be attacked and judged because of it. There is nothing evil about me. Let's examine that word evil. The next time we use such words. And let's really look at if you want to really talk about being an instrument for wickedness or negativity, it seems that some of us are so encased in our fear and our dogma that we cannot see the obvious when it's right in front of our faces. I see more people who are coming from a genuine loving place being attacked by people who have embraced dogma and fear than those who really are just, you know, on an epic level doing some extreme things and they rarely get challenged. As a matter of fact, some of these people are put on pedestals. They're seen as gods. Truly. They are worshipped as if they are were gods. So I'm using this again for those this particular point of discussion because many of us who are watching who are just waking up we will be faced with these things and I'm just kind of throwing, using, again, my experience, my point of view, my commentary, and my opinion, and my revelation all rolled into one to spark in a dialogue for those of us who are just waking up and who will have to contend with the same things. One of the things that I have learned from Christianity is by ye fruits you shall know them, not by ye words or ye belief system, by ye fruits, you shall know them. My life has given ample fruit in service, compassion, love, honor, and respect. And if that is evil, I'm telling you, we truly are living in Bizarro's world. <laughs> I always say that as a joke with my one of my very close friends. I mean, in many ways, this is like Bizarro's world. <laughs> but anyway, I know that there are those of us who have a very difficult time, not so much as believing, but even possibly contending or accepting the plausibility that creation goes far beyond our human experience or this reality but my ego isn't so fragile and threatened to acknowledge that there is far far more to reality than humans scientists are proven that there were different types of humanoids who lived on earth long before modern man even existed and those civilizations were far more advanced. You will not find this in, let me choose my words wisely, <laughs> you will not find this truth in certain belief systems.
but does that mean this is evil because it does not fit into a preset belief system program or what have you? No, it does not. There's a lot, and I do mean a lot, that we don't know. But we will and we can learn so much more as a very young species if we let go of the fear and allow evolution to be what it is. It has always been those who have been seen as crazy, evil, and wicked, etc., etc., who had moved society or helped society to evolve. And there's no difference today. I know that there are those of us who have come here to do work on the astral plane. You guys will be surprised to know how many souls have gotten trapped in the astral plane who carried beliefs, dogmatic beliefs with them, believing that they were in heaven or hell, but were basically being deceived and manipulated by beings who pretended to be our gods and have been doing so for thousands of years. These are beings who understand the natural cycles of the universe, planetary cycles. And what they've done is taken that knowledge and used it to control and manipulate us into believing that these natural cycles are signs of something negative or something to run away from should someone bring a different point of view. And that's a whole nother discussion. But this has been a revelation of mine. And I feel that I will be doing a huge disservice if I did not speak about these things when I do this video or when I do videos about my travels. There will be people who will get it and there will be people who will not get it. Instead of attacking, calling names and quoting scriptures right to left. Take what you know, create your own channel, and exalt that and allow people the right and choice to take whatever they can from you and leave the rest behind just like anyone else. We have that free will to do so. This is a very, very poignant point that I'm making. This is my last time doing so. And let me say for the record, take whatever resonates I've learned and leave the rest that when behind. One uses fear, judgment, and personal attacks as a foundation to save, wake up, or recruit. They are reinforcing, often unknowingly, a mind control technique engineered and mastered by high ranking service to self intelligences. The creator of all creations allowed us will, a mind, and reason for a purpose. Own them. Never forget, if you make it clear to anyone that you are not interested in what they are sharing or giving, and they are persistently and consistently pushing on you in spite of, they are trying to control you and your power. Having stated the aforementioned, I ask that those of us who have a difference in worldview to please respect my stance 
and not force your point of view or belief on me. I am owning and honoring all that I am and open to all that I can be. Anything contradictory to this statement, as far as I'm concerned, is moot. Now, on to my next topic of discussion, and that is, we are now in the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension, fourth density, are two different things. The fourth dimension means that time, intuitiveness, things that deal with the uh, emotional body, space, all those things are now in the fourth dimension. This means that, and this explains why many of you are writing stating that you just know things that you didn't know. You are feeling things. You guys are feeling more connected to animals, to your fellow man. You are uh, having uh, feelings of wanting to know more. Time is accelerating. All these things have to do with the fact that we are now in the fourth dimension. We are not in fourth density. That is the next phase. This shift is operating in phases. We are now gradually moving from third density to fourth density. Density meaning what we can actually touch, see with the physical eyes and interact with. This is gradually happening and that we are seeing more parallel realities that pop up and disappear. They, it's almost like a phantom reality that's coming and going. Before long, we will see people and beings and civilizations seem seemingly dis totally disappearing and alternate realities appearing. This is when we know we are now in fourth density. Now, again, we must remember there is a difference between fourth dimension, which we are now in, and fourth density. Fourth density is what we are gradually, it has to be gradually done because all of this would literally explode. It would just be too much. It has to happen in phases. Now, that brings me to my next point of discussion. There are symptoms and signs of those of us who are starting to experience being um, transitioned into fourth density. And here they are. talk about is the astral plane. Many of you guys ask, what is the purpose for astral projection? Why would we be interested in doing these things? First of all, although we all can or have the potential to astral project, not everyone is ready to do so. And so, therefore, there are certain beings here who have agreed to come here to help clean up the astral plane because just like this world it's like a matrix and small holes are being picked into it picked in it until it ultimately collapses the illusion ultimately collapses the same thing must be done on the astral plane 
And so, because so many souls have gotten trapped there, there are those of us who have come here as a part of our mission to rescue those beings and to help shut it down. And there are some gully, hardcore warriors on this planet who are doing work on Earth as well as on the astral plane. There are, there's a husband and wife team. I'm just going to give you one example of how incredible some of us really are at doing what we do. There's a husband and wife team who work together. They, they consciously lie down at night knowing when they're going to go and basically slay certain types of beings. Why do they do this? Because those that people call demons and negative entities, these are really not negative entities in, the, in themselves. We are dealing with beings who are beautiful, loving spirits who are shrouded and covered with layers and layers and layers of negativity that came from, guess who? Look around. So, this then influenced them and ultimately it's almost like they are possessed. They are not one with uh, the Almighty. They are not, they, they, you can kind of say they are not themselves. They, they are possessed. They are under the influence of negativity. So there are those of us who go there and basically blast them and shatter the layers of negativity off of these beings. And they are free to be their beautiful, loving spirit. This is a revelation I had learned years ago. There are brothers and sisters that I've come across who are, we are synchronizing. We, can, we have affirmed or confirmed this without knowing one another. So there are those of us who come here to incarnate as a human at this time to be part here and part in the astral part in the spiritual and some of us even go beyond that which is very very rare so my work has been on the astral realm but I've also used my ability to go to other parallel dimensions and realms as well and in doing so I have seen some very interesting beings I cannot force my will on them and I would never be able to gain access to those realms if I was not vibrating with a certain level of intent. I very, very rarely approach any beings. It's kind of like what we talk about um, when discussing orbs. Like many of the orbs that we see here on this dimensional plane are actually beings from other dimensional realms. Just kind of coming through observing we are like orbs when we are in our sleep state and we're going to other dimensional realms. We're just kind of passing through and we kind of take a snapshot of what is going on. Because the ultimate goal is to bring more of a balance on this planet and make this planet more spiritual. And the way to do that is on physical, mental, there has to be balance in all three areas before the one main area is fully realized and manifested on earth. So having said that, many of you guys have written me and asked me if I could do more drawings of the beings that I have seen along my travels and I've decided to do two for this particular video. There are others, but I want to show you the two most interesting and um, I think you guys are going to get a pretty good kick out of these two. So here they are. These two characters at first glance appear to be like Earth children dressed in some kind of Halloween costume. But I can assure you they were not Earth children or these are not Earth children. They appear to be a expression where they all are about the same height and their form is very similar. Very short, stubby legs and feet. Uh, they didn't appear to have any arms. I didn't see any hands. Their entire form from head to toe appeared to be one fluid expression. From the looks of it, from their face, skin, hair, clothing, they appeared to be made of pure rocks and pebbles. The face were very childlike or earthly childlike with the exception of the 
faint, hollow eyes. They were expressionless, but yet they appeared to be childlike in their mannerisms. Very peculiar and found me to be quite a source of interest. This particular character was probably one of the most interesting characters that I had come across and although I rarely approach a being or entity along my travels, this one approached me and tried to befriend me. It was a cross between a greyhound dog and a dragon. That's the best way I could describe it. This is the best depiction that I could draw to do it justice and this still does not do it justice. It had very humanoid like qualities. It actually spoke English and he talked very much like this and how are you today? Very much like an Englishman and um, I have to say that this particular character was actually seized. He was one of the beings that I witnessed being captured by the warriors who are cleaning up the astral realm. That particular character was, let's just say, uh, a deceiver. Well, that's it guys. You know how I do. When I take a little break from making videos, I always come back with like three or four videos in one. And this has been a journey and I thank all of you guys for all your love and support. And again, those of us who have a difference in um, belief or point of view, you will be far more effective doing videos exalting your truth. It's not spiritually mature, again, brothers and sisters, to attack and judge others for their truth. And that's just keeping it real. And as always, you are love beyond measure. Continue to question, learn, and grow. And what? Happy travels, all right?